to have a global grand bargain that addresses the triple crisis, including not just climate change, but the end of cheap energy, the water, the fisheries, the biodiversity collapses. How do we do that? Well, let's first we, we look around and we use what already exists in the United Nations in terms of their univer existing universal rights to guide international exchange and commerce. By that I mean how do we use the existing instruments of the UN covenants on human rights, social, eco uh, social economic and cultural rights, civil and political rights, the 100 plus international labor organization standards, uh, the already existing migrant workers convention, um, the women's declaration, the brand new indigenous people's rights declaration, all these things are universally agreed, already negotiated, driven by people's movements, not by corporations. These are our political demands. We've gotten our governments to the table and we need to drive them forward and guide what the way uh, capital, technology, goods, services and people cross border. That's where I think we go and change that current hierarchy. Without it, I don't see we ha how we ever de-link from the export economy. Export performance and, and production is so directly linked to energy use. The more you export, the more energy you use. Um, the reverse, we, we hope, is the more localized the economy, the less energy you use. It's an essential part of any powering down agenda to relocalize the cycle of production and consumption. No way to do that until you address what's going on in the international system and the world trade rules that prevent you from being able to do that. It's these same world trade rules that make it illegal in many cases to ecologize your economy by internalizing ecological and social costs. Uh, the executives, the world's largest corporations, how they are already planning to use these same economic institutions to recognize uh, what they already recognize are, are very much the same problems. They recognize climate change, they w recognize water depletion and the end of cheap energy. One of the big impasses in the climate talks is transfer of technology. Uh, we know there are a lot of folks in uh, the global south um, who still live on the land, indigenous peoples, uh, peasant villages, small farmers. They want more than anything rights to their water, their land, their seeds, and to be able to stay in that land and su live sustainably as they have for years. But at the same time, there's a big move to the cities, there's a big lack of access to energy, and there is a real need for uh, the transfer and the financing of clean energy technology. One of the big things that prohibits that right now is the World Trade Organization agreement that, that basically globalized the U.S. patent system and is called the, the TRIPS Agreement, the Trade Related Intellectual Property Rights Agreement of the WTO. If a country wants to import it, they have it uh, to transfer a certain clean energy technology, they will either be prevented from doing that or they'll have to pay a higher price uh, to the holder of that, that monopoly patent. Where are most of these patents located? Primarily in the North, the US, Europe, Japan, um, I don't see how we get past this whole question of uh, expediting and financing and making cheap and affordable uh, so many of these uh, new clean technologies coming out um, unless we deal with the patent system. We can build on the successes that's happened already with the access to essential medicines fight with HIV, AIDS and, and TB. Uh, the campaign groups, uh, Doctors Without Borders, um, many other groups fought for the last two or three years, maybe four or five years and they got flexibilities and waivers and exceptions in these agreements to allow the countries, especially the poor countries, who have tens of thousands of people dying from HIV AIDS and can't afford the access to those essential medicines that Pfizer and uh, the other big pharmaceutical companies own and protect through these patent systems. They, through a global campaign, they got waivers in these things and now those countries are able um, to import uh, those uh, generic forms and cheaper forms of these uh, different uh, essential medicines. We need to apply that same principle, I think, to clean energy technologies. Just yesterday, as a matter of fact, Brazil announced that it looks like it's going to uh, take the United States to the World Trade Organization to challenge our subsidies on biofuels. If the U.S. loses, it would set a precedent internationally that would prevent any country from being able to protect its own local sustainable um, energy systems. Um, probably the most important thing that the U.S. could do uh, to cut its emissions is increase our uh, automobile, automobile efficiency standards, CAFE standards. 
Not many people know that ten, over 10 years ago, the European auto exporters challenged through the trading system uh, these CAFE standards, and they won. It, the, the CAFE standards were found to be discriminatory against car companies that produce primarily more polluting cars. Um, there's a number of other things in, in the WTO agenda that really restrain what not just the United States but all countries need to do to be able to protect climate and pursue their own domestic uh, and local energy systems. What's our alternative agenda? Leaping from the WTO, right now it's not clear which is more powerful, the WTO or the, the United Nations multilateral environmental agreements. Um, we've seen cases already where uh, the WTO rules are chilling uh, efforts by countries to uh, deal with climate. Um, for instance, we saw just earlier this year the European Union's uh, environment minister and industry minister came together and said, we want to have a border tax against countries that haven't uh, adopted the, the Kyoto Protocol. Um, the French prime minister ran on this platform. It was seen to be a very popular idea in Europe until their trade minister came out and said, nope, can't do it would violate the World Trade Organization rules, never got off the ground. What we're facing here is two international systems, one with the corporate rights of the WTO and another one, the multilateral environmental agreements and all the other universal rights that I talked about. The fight here is which one is, is going to be more powerful. Um, we need to elevate these multilateral environmental agreements above the World Trade Organization and unify them under a consolidated, I think, United Nations Environment Organization that's more strongly capacitated to enforce them and to facilitate their implementation. And with a clear hierarchy of values that these will be superior to the corporate rights in the WTO. That proposes how we can replace the World Trade Organization with a new set of energy trade rules, um, things that allow flexibility for transfer of technologies, things that allow uh, countries to set their own energy efficiency and uh, renewable fuel standards, which currently it's not clear that they can. Um, things that allow also to highlight again the transfer of technology, because a big question here is how do we raise the revenue to finance the transfer of technology? We know the people who invented these patents and the investors in them will expect to get paid in some way, or in many cases those things won't get developed. Well, I think as a movement we need to, to put our collective brains together and think about all the different revenue raising ideas that have been floated around the past few years. Uh, perhaps most powerful could be the idea of the speculative currency tax, what some people call the Tobin tax. It's almost fallen off of our agenda that in July 2001, when the Genoa G8 summit happened, the French Prime Minister had adopted the idea of a Tobin tax and was taking it to the G8 to propose it as a G8 position that they would move forward to their finance ministers. We need to bring these sort of things back because not only do we need to raise the revenue to deal with the transfer of, of, of resources from north to south, but we really need to deal with speculative investment and the whole global econ uh, financial casino. To address the economic institutions, uh, the, the patent regime, uh, the inability of countries to be able to use trade policy to source clean energy uh, from, from where they want to and how they want it produced, and um, to be able to set their standards and so on, addressing the global economic institutions. Um, that's how we unite the global justice movement that has been working on the World Bank, WTO, and NIMF, together with the climate movement, together with the water protection movement, together with the international indigenous rights movement.